Hello, welcome to the Shepherd's Rest Doc Talk. This is episode 16A. I'm Cam and this is Julie. This week's Torah portion is Lech Lecha and it is from Genesis 12 to Genesis 15, excuse me, 17. It's five chapters. So much information. So a summary for this week is um, chapter 12 deals with Abraham being called out of Chaldea, which ends up being yeah. Haran, and the Lord giving them the promise. Then they go down to Egypt. It's the events that happen in Egypt, and then they leave Egypt. In 13, it has to do with um, Lot, which is his nephew, and they, they're they crowded. You know, they have to be separated. So Lot goes on his way. 14 is uh, the war of the kings. And we have Lot being kidnapped, and then we have the infamous uh, Mikhelzenek coming up, and we'll discuss him. He's a very interesting character. Then in 15, we have the covenant that happens between the Lord and Abraham. Love that. Just lots of meaty stuff there. You do have a lot to talk about this week. That's too much. Uh, we need to... Then 16 is all about Sarah and not thinking she's going to have a baby, so she mm -hmm. has her handmaiden, Hagar, going and have the child then 17 is that they get a new name and the promise that sarah will have a child yes. you know like the, not there's a lot to talk about or anything so <laughs> i'm gonna have to <laughs> you have a whole lot to talk yeah, about because seriously each one of those chapters could be a week of its own so obviously i'm limited on how deep i can go into certain things so let's just start with chapter 12 where abram is called out of chaldeum Actually, he's in Haran, but we see that he's been, he leaves Haran, but he's been called out of Chaldea. We know that from Acts 7, 1 through, I think it's 5 or 6. Um, we know from Stephen giving that information mm -hmm. that, and it was common knowledge, that the Lord called Abram from Chaldea, mm -hmm. but he didn't leave from there. Mm -hmm. Because we know from 11 that his father, from the way the Hebrew is, his father forcibly takes them all up to Haran. Then we know that he leaves. Now, in Acts, it says that he died once his, I mean, he left once his father died. And we see his dad lived to be 205 years. We know that it lists Abram and his three brothers mm, in, by importance, not necessarily by age. But the Greek word that's used for he died, if you look, it, it also can mean a spiritually, mm -hmm. a right. spiritual death. So it's very possible that what happened. And if you do the years, um, that Tehran was actually alive when Isaac was born. But because they spiritually, for whatever reason, he was not interested. Tehran was not interested because he was mm -hmm. a polytheist. He did believe in other gods, and he didn't give that up. He obviously didn't feel the need to believe his son. But we know that he left with um, others that had converted. Because it says in 12.4, so Abraham left as the Lord had commanded him, and Lot went with him, and Abram, and seven, and seventy uh, at 75 years old, when he sent out from Haran. And Abram took Sarah his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all his possessions that he had gathered, and the beings whom he had acquired in Haran. Converts, basically. Right. People who said, I do believe in the one living God. And it is said that Shem uh, probably taught Abram, which we know they were alive at the same time, mm -hmm. and very active. So, um, it's so weird to think of that I know Shem that was alive when yeah. Abraham it and Noah, seems like it was that so Noah far. was alive. Yeah, we think this is long, but when they're living, you know, nine, yes. six hundred years, I guess so. <laughs> we, well, what happens in that yeah, <laughs> time? Right, right. <laughs> so, we have, we have him coming out with souls. Now, obviously, something that we always talk about is the, um, in 12, 2 says, and I shall make you a great nation and bless you and make you a great, uh, your name great and you shall be blessed. That, yeah, not only is it going to be from your your natural seed, but it's going to be from those who come in. Who come in. And mm -hmm. here's another great point. Abram is understood that he's going to bring in, right? Right. Well, do you realize he was married to all three lines? His first wife, Sarah, is from the line of Shem. Mm -hmm. Second, Hagar, is uh -huh. from... Ham oh. and Keturah, uh, Keturah, Keturah. Keturah, the next wife, is from Yes, Yefes, Jefes, Jefes, yeah, from Jefes. <laughs> yeah. I have a hard time with that word. So yeah. he actually has children with each line. Wow, meaning so they really can all is be brought all in nations. if they, yes, if they so choose to, they can, they can all come in. I love it. 
Now, we have Abram coming into the land, mm -hmm. and he stops at Shechem. That's where he first stops. And he builds an altar, and there is where the Lord, for the first time, appears to him. And he says, to your seed, I give you this land. And then Abram built an altar there where he appeared to him. And that's in Shechem. And that's important because when Israel first comes in to the land, after the 40 years, mm -hmm. they come in and go straight through Shechem. Yes. So anyway... We have in Shechem also is where Jacob comes and they say, bury the idols. Jacob? Yeah, they mm -hmm. bury the idols before they go to the Mount of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where he goes before. The next place he goes is going to be up to the Mount area, probably Mount Olives. So he mm -hmm. leaves there. It's the same pattern, same place that Jacob goes with his family. Wow. And Very good. Israel comes in that way. It really is one big pattern. It is one big pattern. Let me tell you, we've talked about this before where if it happened to Israel, Yeshua goes through it. Mm -hmm. But you know, it didn't start with Israel. It starts with Abraham. Yes. Abraham goes to uh, Egypt. He comes back with wealth. Israel goes in, comes back. Yeshua goes, comes back. It's the same pattern we see. So we see that what Abraham does, Israel does, Yeshua does. Right. So I just Absolutely. think that's cool. And then remember, as we are also the children of Abraham yes. brought in, we too should look like that. We too should have that same, you know, it's the seed plural, it's the seed singular. And mm -hmm. we're the seed, we, I say, Israel, and then those grafted in with Israel right, are the right. seed plural, and the seed singular we know is Yeshua. And yet we are all embodied in Yeshua, so it's, you know. My blood. That's right. It's just, so they leave Shechem, and then they go to, in 8, it says, to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent. Now we know from Bethel, Bethel, I love this, we say Bethel, but Bethel isn't named until Jacob, when he sees the, la the ladder. ladder. This is the house of the Lord. That's what Bethel means, the house of the Lord. So we look on a map and go, oh, there's Bethel. Well, Jacob's the one that named it. Moses is writing this, so the Lord's like, I need you to realize it's the same place. So yes, put so it here. Bethel. Right. So if he is east of Bethel, but he's between Ai so being in the area of Mount Olives, that is, or right next to it, is Mount Moriah, right? Right. And we know from chapter 14, who's in control of that area? Uh, oh, wait, Melchizedek. Right, Melchizedek. So that means that he actually left and set up tent and an altar and called upon the name of the Lord. So that is the place that he called... Where the temple is, where yes. Yeshua died. I mean, the whole thing, everything's going to happen is where he first calls. really calls to the name. Okay, answer me, Lord, calls. Now, the Lord already spoke to him. Now he moves there. Mm -hmm. In 13.4, it says, And to the place of the altar which he had made at first, there Abram called upon the name of the Lord. So he does again. So he calls on the name of Yehovah, which is the merciful one, right? Right. So that's who he's calling on. And, and the Lord doesn't answer again. The Lord doesn't answer until Lot is out of there. Because when he was told That's to depart the family, uh -huh. he brought Lot with him. Right. And, and it's interesting because it just says... Keeps, and, and Lot continues to be a little thorn in his side. It does. <laughs> even, though, even though we know in Second Peter that Lot is considered righteous. Right. But he, it says he's tormented. It says he's righteous, but he's, he's tormented among the... Why live there? He's mingling. He's tormented because he's like, oh, what? Yes. He refused to be set apart. That's right. He ref Yeah, he refused to be set apart. And when why you refuse to be set apart, you are tormented because you're righteous before the Lord, yet you're, you're, you're getting it from all sides because you don't want to do what he says to do. Right. And we know this from uh, 1311. It says, so Lot chose for himself the plain of Jordan, and Lot moved east. And the moved east um, is actually a, a metaphor, I guess you'd mm -hmm. say, meaning to move away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So when he moved east, he moved away. It says, and thus they separated from each other. So not only did they separate, but they separated physically, but they also separated in the way they sought the Lord. Right. And it's after he leaves that now the Lord answers. It says, in thirteen fourteen, it says, and after Lot separated from them, the Lord said to Abram, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which I, uh, which you shall see, I give to you, you and your seed forever. Mm. So it wasn't until that one was gone. And then Lot looks out when, you have to read it, when he says, 
we can't, we're, we're, we're arguing, you know, there's, our men are arguing, we can't, we can't work right. together. We need to separate. You pick left, right, whichever one you want, and he says he looked and he saw what was good, and he says he saw it was like the Garden of Eden. Yes. And then once he chooses to go that way, then the next um, phrase is basically that he moves away. Mm -hmm. He's separating from the Lord. I'm like, God, it is the Garden of Eden. He had a choice. He went what was pleasant to the eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. and then been that so often with sin. Yeah. So thirteen seventeen is where you see where he says walk through. This is after the promise, and this is after Lot's gone. So walk through the land. You know, he says, um, arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. And you know what's awesome about this what? is it just again shows who gave the land. Because remember in Genesis ten, we know from Deuteronomy thirty two seven and eight that. Israel was already chosen. Then all the nations were chosen. Right. Now, uh, I guess some information you need before you go into 14 is the area of Israel, It this is all uh, commentary, midrashing, but it said that the line of Shem mm -hmm. was warring against the line of Ham for that land. So in 14, we see this battle. We have the five kings versus the four kings. Mm -hmm. The five kings were enslaved to one of the four kings that are going to fight. And on the 13th year, they're like, you know, we're tired of giving you um, money. We're done. Yep. So they rebel. And then that 14th year, there's there's war. And they start going after um, people. But of the four kings, the first king is um, Amraphel. I'm sure I didn't even come close to saying that right. But it, may, it the name means... If I said it right, which I didn't, but the name means <laughs> sayer of um, riddles or dark sayings. Mm. And it is the king of Shinar. And Shinar, as we know, is Babylon. Babylon. It's Nimrod. Now, mm. the fourth of those is the king of uh, Goyim. Goyim means nations. Oh. I mean, do you see this set up? A lot of their battle happens in the south side of Megiddo. Well, Megiddo, the ja the uh, excuse me, not Megiddo, but the Valley of Jeril, uh, Jezreel, Jezreel mm -hmm. is where, in the end, we yes. have the battle. Armageddon. So, right, we have Armageddon happening. It's happening here, too. Yes. So you can see the pattern. So Lot's kidnapped. And it said that Lot's kidnapped because they're like, oh, you're Abraham's family. We know Abraham's wealthy. Right. Yeah, Abraham gets his little, little group together, and they go, and they whoop some booty. Yeah. And they take him down. So the important part, another important part of this, is that when he's done, he goes. Now remember, he was in, he was at Mount Olives, but I forgot to tell you, he then left there and went to Haran. She's living in Haran. But after he goes and fights and gets Lot and he gets all the people, right, he's freed them all. Mm -hmm. He comes back to where he's already been, right. to the Mount Olives area, to um, Jerusalem. We see Mikhail Zanek for the first time. And he is a priest and a king. Now, let's go back to Adam, because the truth is, Adam was a priest and king. He was the first Adam. Second mm -hmm. Adam is a priest and a king. That's right. But we know from Hebrews 5, 6, and 7, we know from Psalms 110, um, <clears throat> that Melchizedek is a priest and king, and Yeshua, the Messiah, is to be of that order. See, there are priests and kings before Israel had the right. priests and kings. Right, because right. God's people were always supposed to be the light of the world. Mm -hmm. And then he put it into, okay, Israel, you guys are going to be. So if you look at Israel as a one, mm -hmm. one body, within it you have a priest and a king. <clears throat> yeah, oh yeah, I like that. So why is it so far-fetched <clears throat> that Yeshua, who represents Israel, is both priest and king? I don't know. I don't know. That is a really good point. Absolutely. Uh, important parts in that is to understand that we have a glimpse at Armageddon and mm -hmm. the Gog and Magog war. Um, we have a glimpse into who Yeshua is. And there are, <laughs> oh, that's Yeshua pre-incarnate there because he's a king of priests. Mm. Oh, it's Shem. Mm. I mean, Shem was alive. It could have been. Hey, knowing there's a war between Shem and Ham, why not? Now, we do know that in Hebrews, it talks about there's no lineage. There's no father... And the point is, maybe there was or wasn't, but they don't tell it in Scripture. So the point doesn't change who it is. Maybe the point Enoch. is that maybe it is Enoch. <laughs> I don't know. We both think that, but <laughs> we're a little bizarre like that. <laughs> but he. But the point is that the Lord isn't showing us who he is mm -hmm. for, a for a reason, because that is a title. 
it's not a person. Right. I mean, it is a person. But that's a title, like Pharaoh, um, Amalek. FBI. All those are titles. Those aren't people. They're titles that people wear. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be like President. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. 15. Ugh, if only I could do justice, but I can't, or we would really be here all day long. So, Abram in 14 basically says, I'm not taking anything from that guy who just wants the souls. He doesn't want the goods. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can go all kinds of places with that representation. But Moses, I mean, Abraham, but Moses, Abraham says, I'm not giving you anything because I don't want you to take credit for what I have. Right. In 15.5, Right before that, we know that he's like, I don't have, I don't have any heirs. I don't have any kids. I don't, you know, what do you mean I'm going to have all these seeds, all these kids? And in five, 15, five, he says, and he brought him outside and said, look now towards the heavens and count the stars if you're able to count them. And he said to him, so are your seed. And he believed in Yobe and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. Okay. That's a. Hold I'm going to try Hold to do on. this. So look here. When you go back and look at how that, when you look at how that word look is used, you'll see that there's more than just seeing. It has to do with comprehending, understanding. So mm. when he says go out and look, he's like go out and understand. The star. Well, that even makes more sense. Yes, and the word tell doesn't mean, well, it says here and count, but it means tell. You go out and tell that story. Understand, retell, recount it. So here's what the Lord's saying. Abram, go outside and look at the story that I've put in what used to be called the Matzeroth. Look at the story in which I have presented because that's your seed. And in it, he understood by knowing the names of the stars that Abraham, I mean, tell that, the story right, that Adam had taught all the way mm -hmm. through. So, so he goes out and he sees the virgin birth. He sees him coming, dying as a servant, the whole thing. Israel being brought in, all these nations coming in, being grafted in, the two ships, the two pen, uh, sheep folds. He sees it all and he understands it. And when he says, you know, he says that, um, and he believed, right? Mm -hmm. The word believed there is amen, amen like amen, amen. Mm -hmm. And it means to confirm. So he didn't just believe, like, okay, I believe you. But he confirmed it, and he established it. It can also mean to be a pillar. Mm. So understanding that whole story, that Messiah will come, and it's going to come. So he, Through your from, seed. from Galatians 3.16 and Galatians 3.29, uh -huh. he understood both those things. My seed is Messiah, and my seed is Israel. Mm. He understood that. He understood how it, the whole thing worked. Yes. And that understanding and accepting his plan is what he said, you're faithful. And yes. See, and isn't it interesting because our intellect doesn't say that makes sense. But by the Spirit, we look and we understand as well. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, we read and go, oh, that makes sense. And then you right. talk to someone else who doesn't see Messiah. And like Paul said, they have the veils. They're like, I don't see it at all. And like, how can you not like see that? you're just that? making that up. Yeah, how do you not see that? And like, I don't. I don't see. Well, move your hands and let the Holy Spirit show you. I mean, I sometimes can't. you get like the horse. Yeah, right. What? Yeah, I only see this. Uh, yeah, I don't, exactly, exactly. <laughs> After that is when he gives the covenant. And he basically says, okay, I need you to go and get the animals, right? And right. So he cuts them open. Yeah, he cuts <laughs> them open, right? And then he has to walk through them. Well, Abram's human, you know, like us. And... Just to be knocked he out. He gives, yeah. Like well, he first gives them the whole information. I mean, the whole, basically, you're not going to have it yet. I promise it to you. But it's going to be 400 years. Then you're going to come back in. Mm -hmm. After the sin of the Amorites is complete, we just had the Amorites getting their booty handed to them in 14. But their sin still isn't full. Right. And they're going to do stuff. Yeah. Anyway. How frustrating. Yes. <laughs> so not until their sin is full. Then... They can come out, which ends up being the exact day to the day of the promise in which they come out of Israel. I mean, excuse me, of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So he's given these promises, and then it's going to be a covenant, an everlasting covenant. Now remember, when you walk through a covenant, we've talked about this before, you walk through with your robe, and you go through, and you right, each get right. blood on it, and then it becomes, okay, whatever blood is on me, if you break it, that's mm -hmm. what happens to your family, right. and vice versa. Oh. 
In 17, it says, And it came to be that when the sun went down, and it was dark, and see a smoking oven and a burning torch pass between the pieces. Abram didn't even walk through. So right. the living God put himself in other two other parts. Right. Father and son, we're going to say. In the living word and the father, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and they go through it together. We have the light of the world, mm -hmm. the torch, yeah. and we have the smoke, which is all, you know, the cloud. They go through it. So Yeshua's idea, um, as the living word, he walked through on Abraham on our part. Right. So when we broke it, remember it says that, that in the Father, it pleased him to um, suffer for Yeshua. It pleased right. him to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not like he's like, whoa, I'm going to get my son. No, he's like, hey, I know that that's pain for the sins of the people. They broke the covenant. Right. Blood has to be, because that's what we, that was agreement. Mm -hmm. But since Abram didn't walk through it, it's not Israel who has to pay that. It's Yeshua who says, I will. Right. Now, don't get me wrong. Israel has things that they go through, as we do, because of disobedience. Right. Right. Well, that's but that's not paying for the sins of the nation. And, right. Because we're called to be lie of the world. So that discipline is so that we can be the light. Mm -hmm. It's not because of the sins of our fathers. It's because we choose to participate in the sins of our fathers. Right. So, I swear, my last point. <laughs> is in 17 because it has to do with circumcision. It has to do with the sign of the covenant. Isn't it interesting? The sign of the covenant to the children of Abraham is circumcision. It's not to the nation of Israel. I know. Yeah. And so it's funny how um, not only you know, in in the Brit Hashal New Testament you see the circumcised, uncircumcised. That's a real meaning converted to Judaism. And what's interesting is how they took over that to be even you can't be sons of Abraham unless you go to Judaism. How yeah. much of a reign they wanted to put on that. Do it the, yeah. uh, you want to be sons of Abraham? You walk like Abraham? That's what we're called to do. I mean, Yeshua says that. He's like, you're, you're sons of Abraham? Then you should look like Abraham. Right. Well, that means this. And the circumcision couldn't have happened before that because he had Ishmael. Had he been circumcised and then had Ishmael, he would be the promise. He would have to be the promise. So the wow. fact that it had to be held on until whatever point that was of age. And Ishmael was circumcised because he was in his house. At 13, which yes. puts him at a certain age. Oh, yes. That After changes 12. that changes an accountability issue. Mm -hmm. So once that changes a uh, certain accountability, now it's time. Okay, now here's circumcision so that the promise, the son of the promise comes already with the sign of the covenant. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Hope you have a great week and thanks for joining us. Shalom. Shalom.